for joining us for this webinar, which is part of our Career Exploration Webinar Series. Today's panel is titled Career Exploration for Girls and Women, Local Government, and it focuses on the career paths and experiences of women who have professional careers in local government. I'm Dr. Susan Madsen, Founding Director of the Utah Women in Leadership Project and also the Karen Haid Huntsman Endowed Professor of Leadership in the John M. Huntsman School of Business at Utah State University. And I'm the host and will be the panel moderator today. And our career exploration webinars further the mission of the Utah Women in Leadership Project, which is to strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women. So I would love to now introduce our three panelists for this session on local government. And then I will stop after introducing the first and ask you the first question. And so my first question, just to warn all three of you, is why did, why did you choose to focus your career in local government? So Amy, I'll start with you. Amy maybe is the city administrator for Pleasant View City. And she earned a bachelor's of science in political science at uh, Utah State University and a master's of public administration, what we call an MPA degree focusing on local government from the University of Utah. Amy, I'll ask you that first question before I finish introducing the other two guests. Why did you choose to focus your career in local government? So funny enough, it was a professor at Utah State University that encouraged me kind of down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Maybe that's not the <laughs> right terminology, but I do love my career in local government. Uh, he was a local mayor up in Cache County and had asked if I had considered a career in local government. And I said, well, really, I, I kind of want to do the DC internship and I want to go down that path with political science. And he, he just kept pounding me a little bit. And there was an internship opportunity that popped up in Ogden City um, with the city council office. And he said, you need to apply for this and kept following up with me. And then he kept saying, you need to get an MPA, you need to do this. And, and it was really an excellent guidance for me to, to land into the field. And once I started my internship with the Ogden city council, instead of doing the cool DC thing, um, I was just like, wow, this is meaningful. This is, this is a great way to interact with my community. And it kind of spearheaded a path forward for me to, to start my MPA and to continue in local government to be where I am today. Oh, that's a great story because a lot of people don't think of local government as a career. So it really took, and I call it the tap on the shoulder, this professor, it, it seemed like he did more than one though. He did yes. like over and over, like get your degree, <laughs> consider this. I love that story. So thank you for sharing. Summer. So I'll, I'll move to you next. Summer Palmer currently serves as the Assistant City Manager of Clearfield City, and she earned her Bachelor's of Science degree in Human Resources and her Master's of Business Administration and MPA from Weber State University. Her work experience includes working as the State Director for Utah SHRM, a City Council Member of West Haven, Utah, and the Director of, of Administrative Services for Clearfield, Utah. I'll ask you that same question, Summer. Why did you choose to focus your career, career in local government? Well, I would say I didn't have a direct path into local government. I took a, a kind of non-traditional path into local government. I started in the private sector in HR, and I was just at a a point in my career where I was looking for something closer to home. Um, I had teenagers that I needed to have a better thumb on and um, I needed to find something that would uh, give me a little bit more flexibility with my schedule um, to be able to spend some more time uh, with them. So I applied for the human resource manager position with Clearfield City and uh, I, I held that position for about six years and um, I ended up going back and getting an MBA at that point. I wasn't sure that I even wanted to stay in local government. Uh, so that degree kind of gave me the flexibility of moving back into the private sector if I needed to. But at that point I was offered uh, the administrative services director. So my first department head position in local government. And that's all it took for me to fall in love with, uh, with local government. And then when um, some movement happened in our organization, I had a, a lot of my counterparts encourage me to apply for the assistant city manager position. 
And it's been just over four years in that position. And I love every minute of it. So I think I'm sold on local government. <laughs> I love it. And that's an interesting way to frame our part of our discussion is that that you know you can shift over to local mm -hmm. government from other positions as well. So I'd like to move on to Denise Stuck, who is the Director of Administrative Services for the City of West Jordan. She studied at Western International University, earning a Bachelor's of Science in Accounting. And she worked as the Finance Director for Draper, Murray, and West Jordan Cities. Currently, she serves as the Director of Administrative Services in West Jordan. So I would love to ask you that same question as well. It's interesting that the three of us have been chosen for this panel because we all came in um, in different avenues. Mm -hmm. So I had um, not gone to school and had been raising my children and running an in-home daycare for many years when um, I started or we went. I went through a divorce. Um, someone offered me a job as an administrative uh, assistant for a project in Maricopa County in Arizona. And that's where my career started. The director there did the tap on the shoulder thing. He saw something in me beyond what I saw in myself and um, really encouraged me to get my degree in accounting because he knew I was really good at numbers. Um, and I did that. Uh, I did it very quickly. I got a four-year degree in two years um, and finished that project. I later met my husband in Utah. Um, he was from Utah, I was from Arizona. Um, we moved our family to Utah and moved my family to Utah and we combined our families. Um, at that point, I did the private sector thing and I found that I was missing the service opportunity, the opportunity to influence change, the opportunity to um, provide accountability to the taxpayer. I loved that nexus and that sense of purpose. Um, and so I was offered a senior accountant job in Draper and within six months was promoted to be the director and stayed there for many years. Um, I told, I love local government. I made a switch um, at some point about 12 years into my career um, to Utah Transit Authority, um, but I missed local government. I know UTA is still local, but <laughs> not quite at that same level. I miss the accountability to my taxpayer. I miss that interaction with people the um, influence on a community. We really do influence change and we do shape um, the experience of life within a community where so much occurs. So I love working for local government and I wouldn't change a thing. Thank you so much for that. For those listening in today, you're welcome to put questions into the chat uh, in Zoom throughout the presentation today. And and we'll work those in, have a little time at the end, and I'll be watching those throughout and, and uh, we'll post them and, and um, work on them as we move forward. So my next question to you all, th all three of you uh, panelists is what types of careers are available in local government? Let's have, uh, let's have Summer start with this one. Yeah. So as I mentioned, I actually started in local government through um, through HR. Uh, so I had experience in the private sector in HR, and um, and and that's where my career in administration has kind of taken off. But there are so many opportunities in local government. Uh, it it really doesn't matter what your interest is and what your skill set is. There's an opportunity in local government for you to um, be successful and, and be part of your community in a, in a really meaningful way. Whether that is in you, you decide you want to work in the arts, there's opportunities in the arts in local government. Um, if you want to work with specifically with, with kids or specifically yeah. with um, adults, there's opportunities in local government. Um, like uh, Denise said, there's opportunities in accounting or in IT or um, in, in HR, in legal. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for people to at least dip their toe in the world of, of local government and then see whether the administration path is something that's interesting to you. Thank you. Denise, uh, what other kinds of positions would you add to that? I'm even thinking 
maybe even bigger cities, I don't know about smaller cities, like engineering and those kinds of things would be in the mix too. Any other comments, Denise? Absolutely. Um, we, uh, we have women who are serving as engineers in our city, um, planners, um, police officers. We have a large influence of police officers now that are women, and that really influences change in our community and building relationships. Um, librarians, if you want to work in the library, um, the Arts Council, like Summer said, um, there's all kinds of places for you to be involved in local government and have a very strong and fruitful career as a woman. Thank you so much. Amy, anything to add on that one? I guess just the only other thing I didn't hear mentioned as much is, you know, even with our parks and, and public works and, you know, if you enjoy being in the outdoors, there's a lot of cool opportunities and and with planning, kind of to Denise's point, I think if you want to shape a community, landscape, architecture, it, you know, there's there's so many cool things that you can bring. And and to Summer's earlier points, it's something that you get to experience and see locally. And I think that that's such a wonderful thing to kind of see the fruits of your labors versus just hope that things are working out. Thank you, Denise. I'll start with you on this one. So, in if high school young women or, or early, you know, maybe freshmen in college are, are thinking about um, going into a field in local government. What type of associates, bachelors, and graduate degrees uh, are available to prepare young women to serve and, and really be in this field? And what, so what would you recommend in terms of, of you know, the kind of areas that they would major in. After your comments right now, I mean, I think under, undergraduate specifically, it matters, you know, you could be engineering, you could, I mean, any of those would prepare you. But Denise, I'd love to turn it over to you to get us started on this question. Well, I think that's where you really get the opportunity, especially in your undergraduate's degree, where you're kind of dipping your toe into everything, right? And trying to find out what is it that I'm really good at? Um, I remember taking psychology classes and sociology classes and accounting classes and, um, you know, really understanding what I was good at and what I felt like I would excel in. Um, and so I think that your undergraduate would be the same that you would be in choosing a career in anything, quite candidly. Um, but focusing more your the work and the intention of what you're learning um, and the projects that you're working on towards service, towards community, towards um, public administration. And when you say the term administration, you know, in the old world, it was paper pushing, but that's so not what we do anymore. Um, so much of what we, everything we do is electronic and, and computer oriented. So certainly IT's influence and that kind of thing. But um, a bachelor's in communication is great um, because we do communicate often the biggest part of our job is listening to our community and responding. We're really here to serve them and to create the environment and community that they want. So I think that your undergraduate's degree, focus on um, communications, um, accounting, landscape architecture. I mean, all of those things are open, um, but certainly an MPA or a master's of public administration is very, very helpful in building your career quickly in local government. Um, and you will find local government is much more inviting um, and much more equal, I believe, than maybe some of the private sector opportunities for women in leadership. Thank you so much. And before I shift over to Amy, I wanted to add that often on these panels, we really try to bring in one woman of color. And we, there really is not a woman of color right now in an assistant like administration position within the state. And so just wanted to mention that, that it's important for us to encourage and reach out to all women, women of color included, to even help them think about this being an option, that you can really serve in different ways. And it is a different career field than, than for-profit, right? Summer, I know you experienced that, but Amy, what other comments do you have? And I guess just to chime in quickly on the women of color piece, um, I had several friends in my MPA program that were women of color and, um, well, they still are women of color, um, but they ended up going into different sectors for whatever reason. And so again, I think it is kind of that, that connection piece that might be missing a lot of the most nonprofits. I have a friend that works for um, the FBI, which is kind of a cool 
field, right, but, th right. but there are, you know, some other opportunities within some of these realms, but I think funneling some of this diversity to local government is absolutely valuable. Um, so just, just with education, I think one of the things, and, and it's maybe not as much as formal education, but just becoming civically engaged and involved, um, knowing and understanding how local government works, getting to know um, the individuals that serve on your city council and planning commission, and getting a little bit filled for the work that they put in because localized work is a lot more connected to the people, which is, is good and sometimes harder too. And, and I think just understanding that is a great um, introduction into local government and some of the opportunities and, and perhaps challenges that you'll face in that field. Thank you. And I know you mentioned uh, you were in the MPA program and that is a real common master's degree um, that helps prepare um, you to, you know, it stands for, you know, you said a public administration and really helps prepare you as well. Great advice. And Summer, any remaining comments on this question? Yeah, I, I, I think, um, as everybody said, you can really pick a field in uh, that you're interested in and find a spot in local government um, to fill. And so whatever is required for that field is important, whether that's an associate's or a bachelor's. Um, I what regardless of uh, whether it's local government or not, when I talk to people about their careers, because I've I've done this in the HR field for a number of years, I I always recommend that they that they get that um, associates and that bachelor's and then find an internship, find an opportunity in an area that you're interested in, find a job in that area before moving on to your master's degree, because um, I, I feel like it gives context to the to the education that you're that you're going to get. And I, I, I hate to say, you know, to stop um, keeping, you know, stopping your progress towards master's degree. I think it's a it's just part of the progression. I feel like the people that um, that really dip their toe in in that job and make sure that that's really what they want to do end up having their master's degree be a lot more meaningful to them. And they bring a lot more to the cohort because they have the experience to go with the education that they're collecting. And then like Amy said, becoming engaged in local government in other ways is a, is a, is a great education in and of itself. Um, I served in, uh, on the city council for, um, Clear, or for West Haven, which was where I lived. Um, for two years became, before I became an administra uh, administrator. And I, I had to leave that seat in order to take my administration uh, position. But um, man, it makes it a lot easier now for me to work with my, my elected officials, with my city council, because I know what they're feeling. I was in their seat. I, I, I felt the pressures that they feel. And it makes it a lot easier for me to help support them in their roles. Thank you so much. So we've got some questions coming in, but let me give my next question. And let's just have a quick response maybe from a couple of you. So be thinking uh, if you want to jump in on this. My next question, and then we'll, we'll go to a few questions from the listeners today. So my next question is, can a career in local government be family friendly? And what might a salary expectation be? So we think about salaries, right? We want to, and we all know that, you know, you can make a lot more money sometimes in corporate America, right? But it's, um, so who would like to jump in and, and take either maybe the first part of that question? Well, and I'm, I'm just going to jump in really quick and just say the, the salary side of things, one of the important factors is benefits. And I feel like the benefit mm -hmm. packages are very family friendly within local government. So if, you know, something to, to keep in mind there. Great. And I know Summer, you said something about you were looking for a job at one point that, that was a little more, you know, I don't think you called family friendly, but I think that's what you were getting at, right? Yeah, definitely. So I had been working in the private sector for 10, for 10 years. And after I got my bachelor's degree and um, I was driving to Salt Lake, um, I was working for a pretty high maintenance organization. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy my work. 
it was just that I I felt like I, I was making a shift in um in the needs of my home at that point in time. And um and I thought, you know, there's gotta there's gotta be something easier out there for me um, to help manage these um these different um hats that I was trying to wear. And so um I I, I'm not sure that I knew exactly at the time that local government was going to be as flexible and as family friendly as it as it turned out to be. Um, but I do think that as an HR uh, professional in local government, I had the opportunity to create that environment no. uh, at Clearfield. I had the opportunity to say, we've got to be more flexible if we want good people in these seats. And so um, I was able to work on job sharing opportunities. I was able to work on uh, shift scheduling, flex scheduling, um, all of those things that right now kind of seem a little like we take them for granted in some in some positions, in some organizations because they're just a given. But 10 years ago, that's what I was uh, 12 years ago, that's what I was looking for, and it was hard to find. And so uh, we've really made that a point in, uh, in our organization to make sure that we're providing those opportunities, as well as the educational opportunities to promote people throughout the organization, um, and just keep good people, regardless of what that takes. Great. And, and you bring up a good point in that when when we get in positions of influence as women, whether it's in local government and others, we can change that. Mm -hmm. We can make that change. And so, you know, my question about salary was so broad. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm pushing back to myself on that question because it matters if you're an engineer, it matters where you're at. But let's focus really on those top leadership positions, those city managers or administrator or assistant or, you know, head of in bigger cities, head of HR or whatever. What would be the range um, that you could expect in any of those types of positions? I mean, it probably is a big range, but it, can someone, yeah, Amy? I, I kind of went through, I, I worked for a larger city earlier before, obviously, and then now a smaller city and and it really, it's kind of an interesting deal with the range of what those can be and what those responsibilities can be. Um, I just ballparked and Summer is an HR expert, so she can correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, maybe at, at the higher end of things um, or the more supervisory type managerial roles, I'd, I'd ballpark 75 to 120. Okay. I mean, it's a big ballpark. It's yeah. It really but is. it depends on the city. It depends on what different tasks they have you doing, what responsibilities. Yeah. And I, I will say, because there is such diversity in the different cities, there really are some unique and diverse opportunities. And to Summer's point, maybe one city is a little more demanding than another. But the nice thing is that, I mean, there's 220 some odd cities in the state of Utah. There's a lot of opportunity there yeah. for different career choices. I love that. So I'm going to shift over to a couple of the questions coming in. Uh, Denise, I hope you don't mind if I throw one on you, especially you've, you've had many roles in, in leadership in local government specifically, but um, what were things that you did in a typical day? Um, if you don't mind um, answering that, you probably did people, people, like a lot of meetings with people and so forth, but any couple of thoughts there? Um, yeah, you're right. The, during the day, during the you know eight to five, uh, mm -hmm. there are a lot of meetings with people. There's a lot of collaboration and coordination that goes on in managing and administering local government. So um, often we'll be meeting with people. The the you know the question about family friendly. I think that um, the same question is about what's our typical day, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've been provided incredible flexibility, and I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. But um, in doing that, I also have to provide flexibility in myself as well. So I don't know that I've ever worked an eight to five Monday through Friday. Yeah. That was not something I wanted. It's not something I thrive in. Um, I thrive in getting the job done and being able to um, provide the best service possible. So that might mean evening meetings with my council members, or that might mean evening meetings with constituents or other people that 
I'm serving in the community, an HOA or, you know, a night out um, with the police department or a ride along with the fire department, those kinds of things. So in order for me to understand best the people that I'm serving, right? I'm not just serving the people, the taxpayer, but I'm also serving the employees because I'm over human resources as well. So, so I during think, the day though, Denise, you probably with kids or other kinds of your interests, you may be able to have some flexibility to, to go to a uh, day event at, at a kid's school or whatever it might be. Tell you, I never missed one event for one of my children ever. Okay. And oh, now, okay. grandmother, I don't miss any of them as well. So I feel like that has what has given me the opportunity to be present in my family, to continue to shape my family, to continue to be there for my family, but also to be able to grow my career at the same time. Thank you so much. I'm going to shift to another question in our chat. And and I love this one. I'd never thought about, lo this makes me smile. I never thought about local government as a career until I watched Parks and Rec and saw how much Leslie loves her job. I don't know how much that uh, show is representative of your jobs, but what part of your job makes you feel excited to go to work? Isn't that a great question? So, um, Summer, do you want to start on that one? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes even when you watch um, Parks and Rec, some things just smack, like they just hit and you're like, hmm, <laughs> that's too close to home right now. <laughs> and other things are are clearly made up. But, um, you know, the the things that get me excited about going to work are honestly the opportunities to work with our our um, employees and our supervisors. Um, we do a, a kind of a orientation meeting for all new full-time employees that come on where um, the city manager and I get to just sit down and visit with them and learn more about them and who they are and what their families look like and, and how we can support them. And uh, those are really fun. I love those interactions. I love the opportunity to, to have those small group interactions with them and so that they know me and they know that they can come to me if they have any issues. We do the same thing around birthdays. Um, we have a birthday lunch with our employees. Those types of opportunities that are incredible, but we also get the opportunity. We have a bubble party this Saturday. We're closing down a local bridge and we're just filling it full of bubbles and foams and squirt guns and it's it's a hot <laughs> summer and we just needed our residents to have a little bit of a break before school starts to enjoy themselves and so you could probably summer take bring your kids to some of these things oh absolutely my kids have grown up in at these types of activities our fourth of july celebrations our night out against crime they they know who our police officers are they know um you know they know some of them by name and and those types of events are are really fun events, um, but you know, just working with our employees and seeing them be successful. Sometimes, even if that means that their success takes them outside of the organization, I feel like I I have a baby who's like graduating and moving on uh, <laughs> because I did I helped do that. So it's those are great opportunities. Thank you. I want to move to another question, but just maybe in one sentence, Amy and, and Denise, what, what is exciting when you wake up in the morning? Like, what's the one thing that is, you look forward to with your job, Amy? Just to get involved, to dive in and, and to help um, solve people's problems and issues. And I mean, again, I think that there's a really um, successful opportunity to see what the positive things you're doing are. I, I think that there's a lot that you can see what you're completing, what you're accomplishing and and people that are pleased with it. Great. It's and tangible. It is tangible. It, thank you. That's the word I was digging for. <laughs> COVID brain, no. Denise. <laughs> um, I love being able to influence change and to build trust. So that's one of the things that uh, we really have worked hard uh, particularly in West Jordan for is building trust with our community, knowing that we're there to represent them and um, do the best job possible and really manage the taxes and um, finances the way that they need them managed. Great. Thanks so much to all of you. I, I, I'm going to have one question at the end, but I want to sneak in 
one question to have one of you maybe jump in and, and do this. And it sounds like, here's the question. It sounds like you all had important mentors. Any tips with finding and building a mentor relationship? I'm going to have to make a comment here because a lot of mentors, in fact, yesterday alone, I had two women come up after a speech and ask me to be their mentor. And I just, I just don't have the bandwidth. Um, but I definitely mentor people who do things for my work, who serve and I spend time with and volunteer and learn and grow. And then there's that connection to mentor. Mm -hmm. So is one of you, I, I'll have one of you pitch in who's, who's, uh, just excited to answer this question, all of you probably, but. I think I would agree with you that you have to build a relationship before you can mentor. And so I think my mentoring relationships, the people that have mentored me were people that it just naturally or organically became a mentorship. I don't, I, I have the same thing. Every, you know, lots of places I go, people say, I want you to mentor me. And I'm like, I can't, I don't quite know how to do that. It's a relationship. Um, it's a trusting relationship. And um, I think that you're absolutely right. It needs to happen organically. So Thank if you. you start, you want a mentor, you're wanting to grow your career, want a mentor, then start volunteering, start getting involved, start putting your boots on the ground um, and finding that person that you connect with that may be where you want to be at some point. Thank you so much. My last question will actually be, it was close to one I'm seeing in the chat. So I'll give that one instead. So each of you, as we conclude, what is one piece of advice that you would give to um, a high school young women or, or you know, a freshman in college? Um, if they're thinking about a career in local government, what would that one piece of advice be? So Amy, let's start with you. Okay, I'll dive right in. I think just um, explore it. Don't discount the opportunities that are available within local government. Um, one of the things, and I guess I'm kind of trying to settle our conversation today, but you know, everything is not always rosy. It's, there are challenges, it is hard work. It's, you know, and, and there aren't a lot of women in leadership roles at, at the top end right now. That isn't to say that things aren't changing. Um, since I started attending the city manager association meetings as um, first year graduate student, there's been more and more women that have infiltrated in, but it's still slowly um, progressing forward in that. And um, it's important to have a supportive um, spouse or partner to, to help you through that because it, it is a lot, but it is very worthwhile. And when I'm leaving my kids to go to work to, I, I feel good about the work that I'm doing and that I'm contributing to society while I'm away from them. And I think that there's a lot of excellent opportunity. Don't discount those opportunities. And, and we need more women involved to, to help influence the change in local government. Thank you. Uh, Denise. Um, I think that women listen and then solve instead of just trying to solve right away. And um, the influence that we can make in local government, I agree with Amy. I remember when I started in my career here in Utah, I would go to uh, my professional organizations and there were four of us women in a room of 150 men. And um, it's very intimidating <laughs> in the beginning, but time has changed so much over the last decade. And now we're almost half of um, the Finance Officers Association now. So I think that um, change has occurred uh, in local government and and please look at local government as an opportunity to influence change and influence your community um, and really be able to know that you've done something good. And um, I was missing that, I, I don't wanna say private sector doesn't do good things, they do, but really you're, um, especially on the finance side, you're chasing profit margins. And um, I'm not chasing profit margins. I'm chasing change and influence and trust and accountability and transparency. And um, it just feels really good. So I would highly encourage young women to look at that opportunity. Thank you so much. And Summer. Yeah, I think I, think I would say don't be intimidated. Um, I, I did walk into a local government uh, for a job long before I took my job at Clearfield. 
um, I had just finished my bachelor's degree and I applied for an HR position at, in a local government. And I walked into the building and I, I it, it scared me. It's, it's institutional. It's a little, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's, it's, it can be scary um, because it's government. And so it's, I, I've, I've long since kind of examined that experience and thought, why did I not feel like I could take that job? Why did I not feel like I didn't belong there? And I think hindsight, I think I was intimidated. I, I think I knew that it was important work and I didn't think I could do it. And mm. I was so wrong. Like uh, it's, it is important work. And that's the reason we need to do it. Because if we don't do it, if we don't do our jobs, um, if we don't bring uh, the, the, all the skills and all of the, the things that women bring to these jobs, they will get filled and they'll get filled with people who will probably do an okay job, but they won't do it like we'll do it. And um, we, need, we, we need people to not be intimidated by this important work, but instead step up to the plate and and show that they're in the right place. Thanks to my guests, Amy Maybe, Summer Palmer, and Denise Stack for joining us today. And thanks again to the Women Leading Government Organization for co-hosting this webinar today, and to the Utah Education Network, the John M. Huntsman School of Business, and USU Extension for their sponsorship. And finally, to all of you listening today and who, who those of you watching this video later, remember that you really have so many career options and I encourage you to explore all these options. And then also consider your individual interests and passions, your gifts and talents and strengths. All of these combined with the college and university education can help you for an, you know, have an engaging and meaningful profession throughout your life. So thanks for, to everyone for joining us today. Thank you.